so quantum computers are, are really entirely a new type of technology to do computations and and in uh, in a very short uh sentence um quantum computers can solve certain problems where where even the fastest a supercomputer may take billions of, of years to calculate and and so examples of of such problems are uh simulating other physical systems and so that may have an implication on on maybe making new materials uh, understanding chemical reactions, uh, creating new pharmaceuticals, optimization problems, which are relevant in the financial sector. And we're only just at the beginning right now to, to fully understand the full range of, of problems that, that can be solved with a quantum computer. And um, there are several different ways um, at the moment of making uh, a quantum computer. And, and Universal Quantum has chosen um, to use trapped ions um, as qubits, quantum bits. Um, can you give us an idea of how this works? Yeah, let me maybe give you a, a bit of an introduction first of why we're using trapped ions and, and, and um, then maybe... maybe uh, Tell you how that works. So, 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 so there's different hardware platforms being used to to build uh, quantum computers, and and um, a famous one, for example, consists of superconducting qubits. Um, the challenge with 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 uh, such a platform is that you have to cool the qubits all the way to minus 273 degrees Celsius, actually to millikelvin temperatures and and when you do that the cooling power is very limited at that low temperature and and that in turn means that that it's very hard to imagine building quantum computers with maybe millions of, of qubits because obviously that would require a, a substantial amount of cooling power and so there uh, and so it's very important to think of application development and 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 many applications do require millions of, of qubits and that's why we uh, are using trapped ions because trapped ions are temperature which works at room temperature and in fact we're using it at a temperature of 70 kelvin so liquid nitrogen temperature and, and at that temperature you still have plenty many many orders of magnitude more cooling power available so trapped ions um, uh, is a technology where you use uh, electric fields to hold an ion inside a vacuum and and this all started with with uh, the, the development of of clocks where an iron was used to as a time standard and the way an iron was trapped was was with a macroscopic um, set of electrodes that that is emitting uh, spinning electric fields and these electric fields then produce what's called a ponderomotive potential which is capable of holding an ion in free space. So that's how this whole field started. And um, now thinking about quantum computing, you obviously have to have in mind that you're going to have to build systems with uh, which then eventually hold uh, millions of ions, uh, each ion being one qubit. And so um, around 20 years ago, people started thinking about use, building microchips that could uh, now host a set of electrodes. And, and uh, that was actually the time when I got really interested in, in quantum computing. And, and, and so I then went to the University of Michigan and I had a contact actually then at the Laboratory for Physical Science with I worked uh, before to build microchips to hold, to uh, trap neutral atoms. And so we talked about this and we came up with a new idea um, of how you could now build a microchip ion trap. And that indeed, uh, after some years of development, worked. And that was actually the, one of the very first ion microchips in the world that could now hold ions um, on a microchip rather than a, a set of metallic electrodes. And I think w w one of the features of um, of your particular um, architecture is that you use microwaves to manipulate the ions. Um, and I mean, do, do you use? Do you have to use lasers as well? Um, um, because my, my understanding is that um, the, the the fewer lasers you need, 
um, sort of the, 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 well, not easier, but the more practical it is to operate um, the system. Is that um, right? That's absolutely right. So, so, so when eintrapping quantum computing started, people very, very successfully used laser beams to execute quantum gates. And the way that works is you have to focus two laser beams with an accuracy or, or, or around five or 10 microns on the position of a trapped ion. And that's easily doable in a laboratory experiment if you have a handful of, uh, of ions, if you have five or 10 ions. And obviously, it's very easy using mirrors to align these laser beams onto the right position. Now, imagine you want to build a useful quantum computer. And when I say useful, I mean um, maybe that machine would have to host millions of qubits. And, and if you wanted to do that, and you have to imagine trying to build a machine where you'd have to align millions of pairs of laser beams. And if any of these um, uh, laser beams moves or the amplitude of the, um, the of the, the power of the laser beam fluctuates or, or even a piece of dust falls in one of mirrors, then this machine won't work anymore. And so that's the reason why, why um, myself and others have been thinking about possibilities of how you can build a quantum computing, quantum computer with trapped ions <clears throat> using microwaves instead of, instead of lasers. Because you, microwaves is what we use in mobile phones. It's, an, it's, it's electronics, essentially. Um, you don't have to align these, you radiate them just um, um, uh, within your quantum computer. And we found then, actually, in, in 2016, we found a fantastic way um, um, to use microwaves, which was uh, really based on an <coughs> invention of, of a pioneer in microwave quantum computing, Christoph Wunderlich, in 2001. Um, <coughs> we then uh, modified this idea and came up with an approach where you could simply execute quantum gates by applying a voltage on a microchip. Chip making use of microwaves and that now allows for a very very simple implementation of quantum gates and and, and the big advantage is now you really kind of get back to the architecture of a conventional computer where you use transistors which work in the same way where you just apply voltages in in, in order to implement a logical gate now we are still using some laser beams but the laser beams we still use are what we call global laser beams so so you take a laser beam through what's called a cylindrical lens and that then produces a light sheet and that light sheet um, can really interact with um, numerous ions, hundreds or even thousands of ions simultaneously and and we've created an architecture where we indeed show how all of this would come together and where we're um, uh, making use of a few laser beams but executing the quantum gates using electronics, uh, you can then build a successful architecture that could then give rise to a machine that could hold millions of qubits and that could actually really execute useful calculations.